1995, a studio named Parallax Software released a 3D first-person shooter into a Sea of Doom clones. Called Descent, it was revolutionary. It delivered the same sort of exploration-based combat that we saw in Doom. Players traveled around maze-like levels to find keycards to open doors, defeat a boss, and get out before the level exploded. Descent's twist was that the game played more like a flight simulator, letting the players spin around the X and Y axes, roll their ship clockwise and counter clockwise, and slide up, down, left, and right. It made people motion sick, especially when played on a slower 386 or 486 PC, and could be unforgiving, but it was novel and successful enough to get a sequel that added some quality of life improvements along with support for the first generation of 3D accelerators from Rendition, S3, and 3DFX. After this, Parallax Software hit a crossroads. The studio split in two, with one part named Outrage going on to develop Descent 3 with a new 3D accelerated engine. The other half of the studio went on to found Volition, and began work on a space combat sim that they called Free Space. After roughly a year of development, publisher Interplay decided that they needed to rename it Descent Free Space to piggyback on the popularity of the previous Descent games, and to avoid infringing on the trademark of a hard drive utility that was also called Free Space. As a 14-year-old in 1998 that had played countless hours of the Wing Commander and X-Wing space combat games, I was excited to see what some of the former Descent developers could bring to the space combat genre. I got free space as a Christmas gift in December of 1998, and was blown away by its fancy gatefold box. This set the tone for what I and so many other players were about to experience. This game was going to be bigger and better than anything else we'd seen before. The game starts with a CGI-rendered cutscene, and introduces us to the central conflict of the game. Humans and Vasudans have been in a long-running war, until a new technologically superior mystery race comes in and starts obliterating both sides in a genocidal rampage. Players start as a voiceless rookie pilot flying missions against the Vasudans in ships with weak weapons and no energy shields, giving you a chance to get a feel for the gameplay. The first thing to note about Free Space is that the presentation is top-notch. Animations in the user interface are absolutely gorgeous, with pre-rendered visuals while selecting ships and weapons, combined with sound design that blends very well with the haunting briefing music. The first mission is a pretty standard escort of a disabled cruiser, but the game quickly becomes more interesting with a cat and mouse hunt of the student fighter wings in an asteroid field. It then moves to escorting your carrier through the same asteroid field for the following mission, as you try and clear the rocks out of its way before they collide and do major damage. Things heat up as the powerful aliens, the Sheevans, begin to appear, and their ships can't be targeted at first, and the weapons that you have access to can't penetrate their heavy shielding. The pace of the campaign accelerates. You get new weapons introduced steadily through the campaign as the Sheevans keep pushing their way through systems, and a renegade faction of Vasudans, known as the Hammer of Light, try to stop both you and your Vasudan allies from averting Armageddon. Free Space's gameplay is a mix of elements from Wing Commander and X-Wing. Power and shield management is very important, like an X-Wing or TIE Fighter, but you also have afterburners and a range of guns and missiles to manage, like in a Wing Commander game. There are also lots of quality of life features new to the genre, like automatic speed matching with a target, a list of ships that you're escorting and their hull integrity, assigning one hotkey to cycle through a player-defined group of ships, and communication options that let you tell allied fighters to protect a target, or split your allies among attacking different ships instead of sending your entire wing after one ship at a time. This all makes the traditional escort these ships against wave after wave of enemies missions a whole lot easier to get through, and helped reduce the player versus the universe feel that other space combat sims at the time tended to have. The ships in the game range from all-purpose ships that aren't the best at any task but can do anything competently aside from bombing runs, a fast but fragile interceptor, a hyper-maneuverable dogfighter with thick shields but a weak hull, a heavy assault fighter with massive firepower, and bombers meant to disable and destroy capital ships. Terran and Vasudan ships tend to have stronger hulls and weaker shields, as well as large missile banks, while Shivan ships have thick shields with weaker hulls and rely more on primary cannons than on missiles. But, as was shown on the game's box, the real stars of this game are the capital ships. Free Space is one of the first space combat games to have truly massive carrier battleships, with all three of the factions having ships that are more than three kilometers long from bow to stern, and are extremely imposing. They also have subsystems and turrets that can be targeted and damaged much more easily than the Wing Commander Prophecy or the X-Wing series, and the player can direct their wingmates to destroy or disable the target, which wasn't an option in previous space combat games. Each of the three factions has a unique design aesthetic. 
Terran ships are all named after Greek mythological figures and tend to be fairly blocky, while the Sudan ships are curvier and given names from Egyptian mythology. The Shivans have a decidedly sinister look, full of sharp claw-like protrusions and a black and red color palette that evokes poisonous insects. And this culminates in the Shivan flagship Lucifer, equipped with an oh impenetrable God, shield, which is actually just the ship set to invulnerable in all but the final mission and massive weapons that can devastate other capital ships and wipe planets clean. Once players were finished with the all too short campaign, there was a lot left to keep them coming back for more since Freespace shipped with a powerful mission editor called FRED for Freespace Editor. It had a simple drag and drop interface for placing ships in 3D space, along with the same scripting tools that the developers used to build up missions, complete with waypoints for capital ships and fighters, events triggered by the positions of ships or their damage states, and even the ability to add in combat dialogue with full voice recording for those who had microphones and a reasonable voice. This led to community-made single missions and campaigns, which kept the fanbase active and engaged until the sequel was released in October of 1999. As great as Free Space is, though, it remains a bit of a flawed masterpiece. The game was developed for both 3D acceleration and software rendering, which made the game more accessible to a wider range of computer hardware, but it also limited the number of polygons that could be drawn on screen at a given time. In an interview with the developers, they admitted that the game engine really didn't take much advantage of 3D acceleration at all as a consequence. There's a limited number of ships in any encounter at a time, and the capital ships are imposing, but they don't really do all that much. In fact, once a few of their turrets have been disabled, a large ship can be dealt with best by the player by hiding in a blind spot, getting their wingmates to engage enemy fighters, and simply taping the fire button down until the capital ship explodes, with copious debris and fireballs, of course. Taken on its own, Descent Free Space is a really good space combat game, with an engaging but short campaign and a somewhat shallow story. The story isn't as deep as Wing Commander Prophecies, and it lacks the full motion video cutscenes that the Wing Commander series had in its third, fourth, and fifth entries. Furthermore, Free Space's multiplayer features didn't catch on as much as X Wing vs. TIE Fighters did, since the game's network code worked quite poorly on dial up internet at the time. Free Space definitely feels its age, and that's largely due to the fact that a year and a half later, its sequel Free Space 2 came out and improved on it in pretty much every conceivable way. The graphics were better, and missions were more complex due to higher base system requirements and a revised game engine that required a 3D accelerator. The story was deeper and had more plot development during the missions themselves, and the presentation in general was a lot more polished with better voice actors. The game added nebula environments that forced players to fly nearly blind, and most importantly the large capital ships were made much more active in missions by giving them powerful beam weapons and flak cannons to make them bigger threats. Missions were more frantic, with larger numbers of allied and enemy ships, since the developers could count on players having more powerful PCs, and the campaign was longer as well. Much like how people look back more fondly on Command & Conquer's sequel Red Alert than the original C&C, Descent Free Space is cursed to live in the shadow of Free Space 2, because it was simply left behind by its sequel. In fact, while I've played through the Free Space 2 campaign countless times since it came out in 1999, my playthrough to capture footage for this video is the first time I've actually gone back to the Free Space 1 campaign in probably 20 years. Both Free Space and Free Space 2 are available on GOG.com and run surprisingly well on modern systems. Even original CD-ROM versions of the game will run on a modern Windows 10 PC as long as you have an optical drive attached to the computer. The resolution for Free Space 1 is limited to 640x480, and it needs some registry tweaking to keep the textures from being bashed down to a blurry mess, but the gameplay is still a delight and the campaign moves along briskly, with a sense of dread as the Shivan Armada rolls across Terran and Vesudan space, culminating in a desperate last-ditch attempt to destroy their flagship before it can turn Earth into a ball of glass. Free Space 2 is a big enough story to get its own video, and if you have an hour to spare, there's a deep dive into Free Space 2 and its dedicated user mod community linked in the description. But for now, thanks for watching, and keep an eye on this space for more gaming and PC hardware things as I get around to making them.